This is the second video to demonstrate the similarities between and the differences between a double subscript arrays and a double pointer. Um, what I have done is similar to what I've done in the previous example that I've given you on paper. I've just typed it into code now. I've declared an array A and an, a double pointer B. And all I've done is I've specified the number of rows and columns and at the bottom here, I have then said, um, sorry, at the top here, I've allocated, I've uh, initialized A to have these values, same as in the example. And then I've also, at the bottom here, I've given B memory space. You can see there I've allocated memory for the row pointers. And then I've also allocated space for the arrays that contained the elements that contain the elements. Um, at the bottom here, I've just given it values. Um, that formula there is just going to allocate values. Uh, it's going to give it values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can go and have, have a look at it if you want to check it. So what I've done is I've printed out some detail on A and B um, just to show what the similarities are. So what I've done is I've printed out the address of A the value of A, and knowing what you know about arrays, you'd expect those two to print out the same. Then what I've done is I've printed out the address of a single subscript and the number zero up to the number of rows. I've printed out the values of those as well, just to show you what they are. So what we're expecting to see is the address of A zero should be the same as the address of A, should be the same as A. By the way, it's this property of arrays which is uh, causing your programs to crash when you send the array as a double pointer. And that should become clear later on. This part here, no need to worry about that. All that's doing is it's doing a new line um, when you've reached the end of a row. So you can ignore that part that just introduces a new line. <coughs> What I've done at the bottom here, um, this is just printing out the values. And here, we're of course, we're expecting the array to be printed out 0, 1, 2, 3, new line. Sorry, 0, 1, 2, new line, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, new line. Um, all I've done here, you can see, sorry, well, I, should, I should just rephrase that quickly. The values here, what you will see is I've printed out for each row. And what you expect to see is A1 will be the address of row 1, or row 0 if you count from 0, and row 1, um, which you, uh, when you look at it, you will see it's the same as the address of the individual elements that I print out at the bottom here. Um, so look at this one and then revert back to this for an understanding. So the bottom here goes through all the elements, uh, row by row, and then column by column in the inner loop, and what I print out is the address of each individual element. The purpose of this here is to show you that with the array A, all the elements are just stacked together sequentially in memory. What I've done just to reiterate that is I've made a pointer. You can see it's declared up here, uh, somewhere here. There we go, a double pointer. And this double pointer I've made equal to the address of A. And what I wanted to demonstrate is when you print out this pointer and you just dereference it once, you can get access to the values of A. So if you dereference it once, you get the values of A. And again, this is the fact that causes your double pointer dereference in the function that you sent the pointer to. That's what causes the crash. I'll show you how to get around that as well. Um, what I've done at the bottom here is just to show you that you can first dereference the rows in brackets and then dereference the columns, and it gives you exactly the same values. Uh, and then finally, I've called a function, which is an alternative to the function that you tried up to now, uh, that doesn't crash. So let's quickly look at that function. It's called print standard array, and here is what it looks like. Print standard array just says for each of the individual elements, print out, and here's the funny thing. You can see I'm sending it a double pointer, 
However, I'm only dereferencing it once. And the reason for that is a standard array, two-dimensional array, is just stored as if it's a single dimension array, just in one long line. And that's why you only dereference once. So I dereference once and I use math to determine where in this long array I should look if I want one of the elements of the two-dimensional array. And that does not crash. So then that's one way to do it if you wanted to work with standard, um, standard arrays. However, you can't work with a standard array if your size is, is dynamic, if it changes. So I'm just going to show you the output How quickly. If you run that, just in terms of A, what you can see is the address of A is that. It's exactly the same as the value of A, and it's exactly the same as the address of the first element. The address of the second element of A, remember A is a two-dimensional array, so that's the address of row 0, that's the address of row 1. And you can see that's not 4 on from it, that is a total of 12 on from it. Remember the, the, the diagram I showed you earlier? I'm just going to pull up the screen quickly so I can show it to you. Um, um, so what we said in the previous example is if you define an array like this, what happens in memory is in fact that the PC just puts it in one big line where these are the first three elements and these are the second rows three elements. So that's why the address of A, the, address, the value of A, the address of that first one and then this one is your A1 is the address of the second row. If you look at it, that's basically this address here. The value of A0, so the value of that first element is just the address of it. I'm just going to check that quickly. Give me a sec. This is the code of that part here. And you can see the value of A0 is just, again, that address of the first part. The value of A1, so essentially saying, where is the first row? And the first row is there. Just note that this weird property of arrays, we lose if we pass the array as a pointer. And that's, as I said, what crashes the function. So the address of that first element is again exactly the same. Exactly the same. The address of the second element is one place on, so it's that plus four, then that plus four, that plus four, that plus four, that plus four, because each individual element takes up four bytes. If I then reference it, using a regular um, single pointer, as you can see, it just prints it out as if it's a single element array or a single dimensional array, one dimensional array, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I print it out as a proper array using the double reference method shown there, it just prints it out like that. So that's the way that you would expect, it, expect to use it if you don't do funny things. Um, then I call the function print standard array, and what you can see is I've printed out what that double pointer gives me the value of. So this passes A to the function, and A, as we saw, is just do 686688 there. So that's sent into this function of mine called print standard array. And then what I do here is I just, as you can see here, in a linear fashion, dereference each individual element because it's in a linear array. Because it's passed as a double pointer, C doesn't know it's an array anymore, so it doesn't know to do all these funny stuff where your array, um, where the array does special things, where the name and the value is the same thing, um, equal to the address. So you need to access it as, an, as a row element. However, for the project, because we don't know the size of an array, we use a double pointer to declare um, to declare the, the B array. So as you can see here, the B array, we've allocated like that. That's where we gave it memory. And I urge you to look at the first video for that. And over here, I just printed out. So over here, 
I'm printing out the address of B. So remember we said it looks like this now. We have a B. We have a B which points to two individual pointers. At least it points to this one and with a one offset it points to this one. And then each one of these points to an array of three elements which are the two rows of the matrix. So if I print the address of B and if I print the value of B, I expect to see different things. In the example, this was at address 4000, this was at address 5000, 5004, uh, which means this must be 5000. And then in here we said this would be 6000, this would be 7000. So we expect here in this value to be 6,000, over here to be the value of 7,000. So obviously the computer will give different numbers. Let's look at the, the numbers on. Um, so I print out the, the address of B0 and B1. First of all, I start with what's the value of the address of B, what's the value of B, what's the address of B1, and then B1 would obviously be this here. What's the address of B2, which will be this one here. Remember that B1 there, where I used the square brackets, that's the same as just dereferencing B with an offset of 0 or 1. Um, so I print out what the address there is, and then I print out what the values are. So first of all, I'm expecting to see the equivalent of 5000 for the address, 5004 for the address, and then the value is 6000 and 7000. What I do then is I print out the address of each individual array element. And then you expect to see, just based on this, three consecutive addresses separated with four bytes or by four bytes, and three other consecutive addresses separated by four bytes at a totally different memory space. That's what you expect to hear. Let's to see here. And then what I do is I print out the actual values using my array dereferencing method. Um, I might as well have said uh, dereference it using the um, dereference B and then dereference with an offset J. And then I print dynamic array. Let's just look at that function quickly. And this is the one that you're expected to do in the project. Print the dynamic array, pass it a double pointer, and inside there you just dereference as if it's a double pointer. So what this will do is, this will dereference the row. So it'll take B, dereference it with an offset. Take B, dereference it with an offset, and then dereference it again with an offset of J. So dereference it again with an offset going from 0 to 3 with an offset of J, and then print out the values. So if I just run this, oh, it seems to change something. What you can see here is the address of B, the value of B. So look at that weird address. It's pointing to somewhere strange, somewhere new. The address of that B0 is exactly where B is pointing to, and then four bytes on is where B1 is. So these are my two pointers pointing to the row elements. It's those two. The value of them, so what is inside of those two blocks, what is inside of them point to the two arrays. So um, the value of them is at 328 and 352. You can see totally different memory space allocated for them. And then I can print out the address of the first element of the array. So essentially that address, 6000, you can see that should be equal to the value of that first thing there, 7614328, 7614328, that's the same. And then this value of that second pointer, this value must be equal to the address of the second row first element, so second, first, second row first element that is equal to this here, exactly the same. And then each one of these are just four bytes apart because it's just a normal array. You can see 28, 32, 36. 
printed out the values and sent it to the function that printed out the, um, the dynamic array. And you can see what I passed to it is just B. Look at this code here quickly. What I passed to it is just B. Passing B to it. So the value of B, the value of B is sent to the function. And the value of B, as you can see there, it's just that there, 9696. And that is then dereferenced, dereferenced again. So the value of this, it's this, this pointer here is dereferenced, dereferenced again, and every time with a certain offset, which then gives you the values. So that's the difference between a normal standard array with fixed size, two-dimensional, and using a double pointer to emulate a two-dimensional array. And why the function crashes, just so that you know, is if you passed your known array, your standard array, into this function here, into this print dynamic array function, is what happens is the name of the array is what you send to it, so the address of that array, so you will pass the address of this thing here, you will pass to that function. It'll dereference it once, and when it does this first dereference, it gets this value, and this value might be 1. And if you dereference one, you're accessing memory that you didn't intend to, to reference, that you didn't intend to access. You only want to dereference once with the standard array because it's just stored as a single dimensional or one dimensional array. And that's the big difference.